And along with the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Foundation, I want to welcome you into my company of friends. Come on in. Hi, welcome to In the Company of Friends with Susan G. Coleman. And today I have with me Miss Shirley Ralph, who is an actress and a dear friend for many years. How about that? How about that? And Dr. Dennis Holmes, who's on the board of Susan G. Coleman, is a researcher, a surgeon. And also you have a lot to do with clinical trials. And that's what we're gonna talk about today because clinical trials is something that I don't think our community is really aware about. That's right. And something that I think everybody can benefit from. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Holmes, why are you involved in clinical trials? Well, clinical trials are so important because it's the way that we move cancer care forward. I mean, we treat women now based upon trials that were done in the past, and we will treat women in the future based upon what we learn about treating breast cancer now. It's a way that we move the ball and make treatment options better for women. So in your breast cancer uh, practice, you were just a regular surgeon and then you got interested in clinical trials. How did you make that transition? Well, I was inspired to become a breast surgeon because I knew that that was one of the most innovative areas of cancer care. Uh, we are committed to learning what we're doing now, figuring out ways to do it better, and then applying that to treatment for women in the future. Everyone wants a better outcome. We want to have more effective treatments, we want to have safer treatments, and clinical trials are the way that we achieve those goals. The only thing that really shocks me about it is that I really thought we would have had a cure by now. Mm -hmm. I really thought that we would have a vaccine or, or something. I thought it was gonna be so different. I did not think we'd be fighting so many of the same fights around the country, which I still, I, when we were doing this, we still had to convince people that you should join clinical trials. You should be a part of it because without you, there is, there, there's no place to start. What I found so often is, very often we know nothing about the trials. We're not told about the trials and we're not made to feel comfortable. So what do you think the fear is? I mean, especially when it comes to like breast cancer and AIDS, two of the diseases that are just ravaging and taking over our lives in so many ways that, like you said, you thought by now there'd be a cure. We were hope we're still looking for a cure for cancer. Right. You know, I'm a breast cancer survivor right. myself, so you know, I'm very passionate about it. What, what do you think the fear is? Well, I have a, a slightly different take on it. I mean, I certainly understand, and many of us understand, that the challenges of fatigue and how that has influenced people over the years, but, but my experience with clinical trials is different. People, at least in cancer care, want better options, and they recognize that clinical trials are a way to achieve them. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, with any clinical trial, there are risks and there are unknowns, but having a well-informed patient having a really informed doctor to, to, to give them options does make women see possibilities where there might not be some possibilities. Uh, for example, there are treatments that you can only get if you're in a clinical trial. If it is desired treatment, uh, maybe a treatment that is more effective or treatment that is safer, clinical trials might be the only way to get access to that treatment. And many people that come to see me are looking for different ways or better ways to treat. So it really is an opportunity. I find that, you know, a few years ago I did a study among African American and Hispanic women, mm -hmm. you know, the, the group that never participates in clinical trials, one would think. Uh, and these were cancer trials that we conducted where we had 70% participation in clinical trials. Right. Not 5% or 3%, no, but 70%. The difference was giving them options yes. to choose, having a range of trials. Not everyone has the same risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. Some people were, are inclined to take very little risk, whereas some want to take more risk, but having a range of options, really a menu of trials from patients to choose from so they can find a trial that suits their level of risk. And you also have to be in a place where that is offered to you. Yes. With my dad's cancer, my dad was offered different trials. What kind of cancer was, did your dad have? My dad passed away, it was prostate cancer, and then it um, metastasized into, uh, lymphoma. you know, lymphoma. Uh. So um, I just <laughs> wish that these things had been offered to him, you know, sooner. Very often, you know, we, we think, you know, about the, the well-informed, the, the well-informed patient and all of that. There are a lot of people who are afraid still to take the flu vaccination yes. because they get sick. And then you would hear, it's not possible, you can't get sick. And now this year, they're saying to you, well, you know, a lot of people did get sick last year. With <laughs> and, the and you're like, 
Oh, and they said this year. But you're not going to get it. But you're not going to get sick this year. year. <laughs> you know. I, want, I have to admit, I'm one of those people, I'm like, no pants on the flu. Exactly. I, I take care of myself and I've been lucky so far. So I, I take bad. it every year. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among black women. We are more likely to be diagnosed younger, at later stages, and with more aggressive forms of the disease, which limits our treatment options. Have you seen any major strides, like any uh, technology that's really bursted out, any new developments? You know, I've, I've committed my entire career to, to this, mm -hmm. to, to conducting clinical trial and treatment innovations. And even in, in my short career, I've seen some uh, dramatic changes. For example, uh, 10 years ago, actually 15 years ago, we started researching different ways of giving radiation to treat breast cancer. As you may know, typical way of giving radiation after lumpectomy is a six week course of daily radiotherapy. We started looking at the option of treating with a single dose of radiation given at the time of surgery, completely replacing that six week course after the clinical trial were complete, was completed, we found that the one-day course was as effective as a six-day, six-week course, wow. and now we're offering that routinely. Wow. That's oh, in my so. career. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm currently conducting a study looking at cryoablation, which is tumor freezing, to uh, as an alternative to surgery for small breast tumors. Mm -hmm. uh, is that sort of like that cool, cool? Fun what is that cool thing? Cool sculpting where they no, freeze no. the fat. That's that's a way of uh, <laughs> that's plastic that, surgery. That's right. Right. <laughs> But, but the concept, though, of cryoablation, which yes. is freezing, which is that, you know, just like can kill fat with cool sculpting, we can actually kill breast tumors as well. Oh, wow. did that, do they do that with cysts? Because I think I might have had that in the uh, uterus. Is that, isn't that a yes, procedure? Yes. You know, cryoablation yeah, has been used I, for decades. I think I have that. I've had a few things, but I'm still here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but now it's emerging as an option for breast cancer. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. And so, you know, if the tumor is small, if it's the size of basically two centimeters or smaller, which is about the size of a nickel or smaller, you know, it can And then you won't need radiation. Uh, for older women in this particular trial, age 70 and older, they receive no radiotherapy, mm -hmm. they receive no breast surgery, they receive no lymph node surgery. Oh. Wow. So, okay. I mean, that's a very desirable treat option for many women. I mean, Rather than having it removed completely. Having surgery, the breast yes. surgery, lymph nodes, and radiation. Wow. We can replace those with a single 30 minute visit to the office with cryoblation done while you're awake on the table. So I'm not That's saying major. that this is the, it's a solution for all women, but the point is that this option is emerging mm -hmm. as a result of clinical trials. Right. We did earliest phase trials where we studied the tumor, we ablated the tumor and then removed it to prove that the techniques worked. And now that we have the confidence through clinical trials to prove that that works, we can actually treat without removing the tumor yes. so that it's now a convenient office-based alternative to surgery, wow. anesthesia, radiotherapy for the right Wow. Way. That's why this is so right. important so that somebody who is watching hears the message that they know they are not alone. No. And to speak up, you are worthy of the help that is out there for you. What you must do now is access yourself for that help, go on and get it because you are so deserving. I couldn't have said it better, Miss Shirley Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just closed out this segment for me. <laughs> no, but I want to thank you both so much for coming and thank sharing. You. And uh, I think one thing we've all gotten out of this, if you know somebody or you yourself, don't be afraid to do a clinical trial right. because it may save your life. It mm. definitely may help other people. And we are, we're on a cutting edge of technology and medicine in That's so right. many ways, so many diseases. We have such a long way to go that we've got to experiment and just see what happens. So I thank you guys for thank coming you. into my company of friends. There you go. Uh -huh. Susan pleasure. G. We're a so pleasure. happy we're here. Thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you. you to Susan G. Coleman. In the company of friends.